back. Hi. Hello, welcome to Knock Knock High with the Glockenfleckens. I am Dr. Glockenflecken, also known as Will Flannery. I am Lady Glockenflecken, also known as Kristen Flannery. Thank you for being here on your commute. Yeah. Or We're your, so happy you're listening. Or you're watching. Drifting off you're to doing. bed. Whatever you're doing. Oh, do you think people use us to fall asleep? They use my... I, I have been told I have a somewhat soporific voice. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> you but set I, me up I'm, for I'm, that I one. Know. I'm like a like an ASMR type mm. of voice. Yeah, I, I guess. could do that. Yeah. And then Maybe plus, we should do a special well, I'm do- sleep episode I'm ar- and we use our best I'm already doing the voices. eye episodes. That's, That's probably true. enough. That is true. That's <laughs> enough for me. <laughs> Uh, people, uh, but people also listen to the knock, knock eyes while they're driving. Yes. So not, does it, so don't does do it, that. If some, some eyeballs people, make you bored enough some, to fall asleep. Some people, it makes them very excited. Yes. Some people, lots of people are very interested in it. I just can saying. see the point. It's just, just I'm not one of them, but you know, more power to you. And I am happy that we can provide a service to you. Are you excited about April? April. I'm Always excited about April general. because by that point I am ready for winter to just You're done get out winter. of here. Yes. Um it starts getting crazy it in our lives. It does. That is the one downside. April, May. April is very busy conference seasons. April and May is conference is like when everybody everybody wants to have their medical conferences. Yes. And we do in a lot the of spring and in the fall. We get two like really busy seasons. Yep periods of time yeah so but it's good it's good stuff i like you know going around and traveling talking to people sharing our story and you know being able to like be on the ground like normally we're just here in this room you know just the two of us talking to ourselves so it's nice to actually get out and like meet people have we ever done any april fool's jokes from to each other do you think it would be possible at this point um I feel like it'd be really, really hard. I could probably prank you. I don't know if you but, could. Uh, oh, are you kidding? You are deathly afraid of spiders. Oh, well, okay. Um, If you're going to go that route, the cheap joke route, sure. Well, see, I think all, like, I've, there's so many, like, prank accounts on yeah. TikTok. Mm-hmm. And most of them are kind of mean. Like, right. they're it's not, a lot like, of, like, jump scare. Well, it's just not, I don't know. I, I my my face watching those is is just like I just have no reaction like yeah. that I don't know I've I've never been like a prank kind of humor person though that's true I that think we have true. one of our daughters though is they love to prank us yeah they try to prank us and we 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 are we're good sports about it we pretend to be yeah I do remember one April Fool's joke that was not appreciated when I was a kid we would try to prank my dad in particular because he was oh, you no. know. <laughs> not oh no, no no um no 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 he's not well how do we, he was just busy he had a lot going on a lot on his mind very stressed out you know that period of he, life that we're in yeah. now right that's where he was and it's there's just a he, lot. he was working his ass off and he yes. didn't feel like being pranked correct and so one day <laughs> we put rice krispies in his work boots that he had to wear to go and you know when you're like trying to get out the door in the morning and you're in a rush and everything and so he put his foot in and just crunched down on all these rice crisps he was not amused not amused that's a good one we thought See, so. that's that's a that's a good that's a yeah. that's a good like kid but prank. you know we didn't have the like awareness yet to be like mm, that's not the time not the time when he's getting ready trying to get off yes. to work and he's he's got now he's got to clean all that Yep. All that shit out and he's of probably going to miss some of it and it's going to crunch his boots all day and, you know, just w- wasn't appreciated. <laughs> but it was a good imagine. effort. That's ah! <laughs> probably the sound. I'm sure that was the sound he made when he stepped in his boot. Ah! Definitely some form of, of yelling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. It may have been more like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm excited about the, the April Fool's jokes we have in our future. Particularly me. I'm sure oh, yeah. like, the kids will get into it. Yeah. I, yeah. And, you know, we've got one kid who's, well, both kids have a really good sense of humor, but one kid who who leans toward the pranking, especially. Yes, so, yeah, well, I'm sure we're in for it. Let's talk about our guests. Let's do this it. This fine April day. 
Yes, it's a very, uh, it's, it's an appropriate day to be having these guests because they have a book out today, April 2nd. Absolutely. Uh, the Wisdom of Nurses. We're talking to Sarah Fung and Amy Archibald Varley. Uh, they are hosts of the Gritty Nurse podcast and authors of The Wisdom of Nurses out today. You can go find it. Yes, go get it. Go get it. Um, they are uh, uh, incredible nurses. They've, been, they've worked at the, at the bedside as, uh, in leadership, nursing leadership. They are just healthcare patient advocates. They've just done a lot of things. And, and it was fun to hear their perspective because we don't do a lot of nurse interviews on this podcast, but that's going to change. That's going to change. All right. We're going like to do more. We're going we're gonna to branch out a little bit. Get out outside of my comfort zone as a physician. Right. Yeah. Which is under, I mean, that's just, that's what you are. Yeah. There's yep. no shame in that. <laughs> <laughs> it's what you know, but, but it was, uh, now we can. Um, now that we have this podcast, it's a good opportunity to absolutely. learn about other uh, perspectives as well. Absolutely. So um, it was a great conversation. Learned a lot. Uh, so should we get to it? Let's what do you say? Go. All right. Here we go. Today's episode is brought to you by the Nuance Dragon Ambient Experience, or DAX for short. This is AI-powered ambient technology that helps the physician be more efficient and reduce clinical documentation burden. It's great. To learn more about how DAX Copilot can help reduce burnout and restore the joy of practicing medicine, stick around after the episode or visit nuance.com slash discover DAX. That's N-U-A-N-C-E dot com slash discover D-A-X. All right, we are here with Sarah Fung and Amy Archibald Varley, uh, uh, two uh, extraordinary nurses who are doing some incredible things out there in healthcare. Uh, we're so excited to have you on. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. Coming to us from um, the Great White North in, <laughs> in right. Canada. Uh, how's are you doing? Okay, and the is winter long? Does it mm, feel long? This, to this you guys? is the worst part. It's been going on approximately it's, forever. It's really annoying us right now in Portland because it just won't stop raining. It's and funny it's, you well, ask because it's actually yeah. really warm today. So, yeah, um, oh. let's see, twenty <laughs> Celsius, 16. which is like in the seventies, like low seventies today, what? and then it's gonna go yeah. cold again tomorrow. Yeah, uh, there's no snow. It's actually green grass, so it's 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 a little bit of an anomaly. We're a little bit wow. worried about climate change here. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's, it's nice for today, but it's also terrifying. It's good, yeah. but the Earth is dying. So right, it's like, yeah. well, <laughs> little problems here. We got a few years there. <laughs> That's well, funny because here it's abnormally cold, so it's everything's just all messed up right now. Well, I, uh, what I want to start with is, so I, I did a, a little bit of research. I actually Googled how many nurses are there in, in oh, wow. I didn't check Canada, but I, I checked the U.S. There's 3 million nurses, uh, registered nurses currently in the U.S. My question for you is, where are they? <laughs> <laughs> because, we have the same question. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? I'm sure it's the same in, in Canada as well. Uh, where, because uh, all I hear all the time is, is like staffing, right? That's it. it every, hospitals, surgery centers. It, it just, that's like the, 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 one of the biggest frustrations. So I figured that's maybe a good place to start is what, what's going on right now? That's a great question. I, you know, I've heard different numbers for the States. I've heard 4 million. So maybe 1 million have just oh, gone missing in the last few years. Oh, maybe. <laughs> I did literally all They're I did was search on Google yeah. how many nurses there are. So don't so take that number with a grain of salt. There's probably a lot more. That's a great question. I know I know in Canada supposedly there are 400,000 nurses, which makes sense because we're probably 10 times smaller than you guys, but I don't know where they are. And that's that's a question Amy and I have asked a lot because on paper there's this many nurses, but are they actually working or have they left the profession? Right. Right. Are they doing something else? That's a really difficult question to answer. And I think since the beginning of time, I'm going to say retention and staffing has always been an issue. But of course, the pandemic pulled back the veil and really exacerbated a lot of these underlying issues with staffing. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe I would just chime in there in terms of kind of where I might think they are as well, because I think there's a difference between um, registered nurses. So any any nurse can register, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're working and practicing mm. in the hospital. So that's right. where there's there's a discrepancy. I know here in Canada, we 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 collect our registration data, but we don't collect 
where nurses are necessarily like dispersed data. So that's mm. the problem what we have. We say, oh yeah, we have all these amazing nurses that we should have boots on the ground, but we actually don't know where they are all geographically and where they might be situated. So that's what the problem is really too. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's been the the pandemic really kind of kicked off this this great resignation is the the term I've heard from a lot of people and um, you, you'll have to excuse me if I if I ask some um, basic questions about nursing because as a physician like this is great I'm so excited about this just because like we don't I don't get to, I don't have this like kind of conversation with nurses very often so it be it's going to be a lot of fun I think to just get into your profession so it might be very basic for you guys like you know but but for me and a lot of our audience i think this will be helpful to to hear like the issues that nurses are facing and and how we're in this uh or how at least our healthcare system and i'm sure yeah. you have trouble in your healthcare system as well um that's making it more difficult for healthcare professionals but um the one thing that i also wanted to know about was this the this topic of travel nursing, like travel nursing has been around for a long time. Um, and it seems like that's becoming more common in, in hospitals, I guess, is it that they need more staffing, they're low on staffing. And so they, they, is there a service that you can, you know, just hire someone to come in from anywhere in the country or the world and have them do nursing for you? Is that, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, like here we we call it a mix between like travel nursing as well as like privacy, private agency nursing. And I'll be honest, it's kind of nurses going to where the money is and where the incentives are. Nurses are de-incentivized right now. Uh, a lot of us are very not happy with the way, whether it's staffing levels, whether it's, you know, keeping us on board, whether it's treating us well. For example, in here in Canada, in Ontario, we had a bill called Bill 124, which actually restricted our wages and capped our wages during the pandemic. Where which you would think it'd be a really? time where, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. And um, it was actually deemed unconstitutional. Our government was actually fighting oh with nurses. God. And just recently, um, the government lost. <laughs> it was said it was unconstitutional, wow. so they had to reverse the bill. But again, just kind of bringing it back, it's the fact that, you That's, know, nurses... That doesn't make any sense. It no. doesn't make they any sense. They should have just sense. paid nurses what they deserved in the first place, right? And avoided all of no. this. <laughs> yeah. But, it, right. but essentially, like, it's going to where the money is, right? And going where incentives are. Right. If an organization is willing to pay you $175 an hour versus $30 an hour, you might decide to go with an agency or you might decide to travel sure. because there are better bonuses. But again, it leaves those staffing, the staffing for, you know, base staffing to be quite horrible because these nurses are only assigned at various different intervals. So whether it's three months, it's just a short assignment. So, um, but it leaves, you know, those staffing levels at the base level really, really low because nurses are being pulled right. to the private sector. Yeah. And I would say that also it's it's really about having more control over your work schedule because a lot of nurses don't have that. You can only get hired into a, a full time nursing position, whereas if you're a travel nurse, you can kind of pick and choose or you can take time off in between assignments. And a lot of nurses will actually mm. quit the job there at, at the hospital and take a travel nurse position and go back to that exact same hospital getting paid double and so you can imagine yeah. you can what? imagine the dynamics yeah. that creates, i mean why wouldn't right you? like yeah. if i was making let's say let's say i was making 50 bucks an hour and amy comes back as a travel nurse and makes a hundred dollars an hour that creates a lot of animosity within the team you know why right. is one person mm -hmm. getting paid twice right. as much as the other to do literally the same job right oh man i didn't that's that's i that's <laughs> that got a the professional <laughs> dynamics and and I, I can't imagine that uh, you already we already have enough trouble like in the the day to day grind of healthcare, and then to add the kind of interpersonal conflicts that that I'm sure brings up um, uh, is uh, challenging to yeah. say the least. Whose idea was this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this this begs the question. So, what do we do to? Uh, is it just pay? Is that I mean, because everyone's always trying to come up with. All these different solutions for how to in, to improve retention and to make people happier in their jobs, but it can't just be the money part of it, right? There's there's got to be other other factors that are pushing people outside out of nursing, and so can you speak on that a little bit? 
Yeah, I would definitely say it's not just the money. Money is a part of it, but it's also about like the respect, right? I think one of the things that we did see during the pandemic was, you know, here in Canada too, there were, you know, lots of banging of pots and pans, people celebrating nurses. And then it kind of took a little bit of a shift where there was there was like a political discourse, an underlying political discourse that started to kind of emerge and healthcare mm-hmm. became very politicized. And then we were seeing, well, it went from banging of pots and pans to some healthcare workers actually, you know, try sneaking into hospitals, being yelled right. at, being spat at. It was, it was crazy, the, the flip in terms of how people were being treated. And again, I think it's also looking at just staffing levels. So I've probably worked as a nurse for over f- 10 to 15 years now. And we've been talking about staffing levels for since the time I was in nursing school. <laughs> so it's kind of like, why aren't we dealing with these these like huge levels of staff, like issues with staffing. So just like, we're always working short, the hospital's underfunded, we're not getting enough nurses. And that was always a challenge because at the end of the day, we want to give the best care that we can, but we can't if we don't have all the resources, we don't have the, the actual physical bodies to help us provide that. So I know some states, for example, like California has staffing ratios. So it's like one to mm-hmm. five, one to four. We don't, we don't have that right, here. Mandated. BC just here in Canada has just started that we haven't even had that conversation. And I think the other piece is like, we're a female dominated profession. There are of course men and we welcome more men and folks of various different backgrounds to, to apply and be in nursing. But um, it presents that challenge when, you know, you have, you need, Childcare and those things aren't even talked about. So it makes it really complex mm-hmm. for us to want to stay in the profession when we're not being respected or heard. And I think maybe Sarah will talk to this. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, we heard a lot from physicians, but we didn't hear from nurses. And nurses were scared to speak out. And that's kind of where mm-hmm. Sarah and I stepped into this really strange realm where we just started speaking openly about our experiences, which um, was very scary, but it was important because nursing voice wasn't heard for a very long time and we felt we need to fill that gap. Yeah, there were. Yeah, Sarah, tell us about that a a little bit. Just about filling the gap. Yeah, I think that um, just going back to what Amy said with, um, you know, safe staffing ratios, it is a scary, scary thought to think that you might be the only nurse for the entire unit. And that did happen during the pandemic where there would be one nurse for 20 patients. And how can you really do anything except hand out medications, never mind, you know, provide that emotional support and that teaching that patients really need. And that creates a lot of emotional distress, moral distress among nurses that we know the level of care that's needed, yet we can't provide it and we can never keep up with what we need to do. Um, So I think there's a lot of different issues. So pay, safe staffing, whatever is happening on the West Coast, I think the rest of our countries needs to get on board because like Amy said, California BC now have actual legislation with how many patients a nurse can have. And even out in California, they have something called a break relief nurse. And I'd never even heard of this before. So I think they're doing some really great things and we could definitely take a lesson or two from them in terms of what the rest of us need to do. So a break what is a, a break? break nurse is yeah. literally someone I've never heard of this before. But a someone, break? You get a break? break yeah. Relief. So there's it's, a nurse. It's a rare thing. It's a rare thing. Thing. It's a like rare thing. around to all yeah. the other nurses and says, "Hey, I'm going to take care of your patients for let's say half an hour while you go have a break." Yeah. Because usually what I'm used to and probably Amy's used to, we go on break and we have someone cover our patients for that time, right? So yeah. that's all we really have. It's not an actual extra body. Yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's a working other lunch, nurses, really. <laughs> yeah. Right, it's just yeah. other nurses taking on more work, right? Mm-hmm. So that you could go to the right. bathroom, right. right? Right. Sometimes and sometimes not, right? Let's. It's wild. <laughs> yeah, going back to the staffing ratios for a second. So you you mentioned that it's like one to twenty sometimes, and that's obviously not ideal. That's outrageous. Um, that's. But what? Just for those of us who are not in in medicine or, or nursing, what do you? What is a what is a good ratio? What is a safe ratio? What allows you to do your job well? I think it depends depends on the area. Go ahead, Sarah. Sorry, it depends on the area that you're in. So if you're in a critical care area, such as ICU or even labor and delivery with um, an actively laboring woman, it's one to one or one to two possibly. But in other, um, I would say more medical surgical areas where patients sleep at night, um, it might be one to four during the day and one to six in the evening when people are supposed to be sleeping, but laboring patients don't sleep, as you know, and um, in, in the ICU, they need really uh, close monitoring. Yeah, I'd yeah. say more so like in LTC, you might see those really high ratios. So sorry, LTC is long-term care. You might see those really high ratios where it's one RN to 20 plus, and that's 
not safe as well. Right. So you're doing essentially what, you know, just to translate this, depending on the area, you're doing like the work of three to 20 nurses (laughs) one nurse is having to do yes yeah Yeah, i mean it it, it just it does depend on the severity of the patients of the of the care or the the complexity i should say like the acuity yeah yeah Yeah, but just like for other people listening like imagine whatever your job is that you (laughs) have to now do that job for three to 20 people and it's Mm. just you that's absurd and then they're capping your pay Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) Yeah. no wonder so I think we figured not... out where the nurses are going. I mean, my goodness, uh, who it then, takes a special person to have to to like stay during all of this. This is this is stupid working conditions. And then you get a for a nurses week, you get a like a a rock. Oh, don't even yeah. talk to me about nurses week. <laughs> because <laughs> a paperweights. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite nurses day gift? Oh, nurses week. Oh, yeah. I saw some really good <laughs> things. It was There's like been some really yeah. I think some managers think that nurses are children and they would give them like gummy bears and jelly beans and was and they'd write a little note that would be like you're so sweet, like that kind of stuff. Which oh, I think is like degrading. classroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Elementary classroom. Oh, I, oh I, the I was best actually... thing I saw was Amy just about the rock. It was like um here's a rock. Now bring your own paint to paint your rock for Nurses Week. <laughs> what? You know, arts yeah. and crafts. Like maybe you can get a... a... Well, we're not even going to supply you with the, no, with the no. art materials. Or, you bring your own. Or the time oh to gosh. do it. When are you going to When are you going to paint yeah. your rock? On You're your... doing 20 people's jobs. <laughs> no, <let's get> <laughs> on our break. <laughs> right? Oh um, my goodness. I was at that I I saw every 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 nurses week I it, it had same thing happens on like the, the you know doctor's, doctor's day and, yeah um where everybody loves making fun of the the hospital gifts right and that inspired me I did a video I think it was last year yeah about all these um silly gifts the, these get. gifts and then the puns that they attach to the gifts which the is worst. almost just makes it so much worse <laughs> well so let's talk about I mean we've kind of alluded to it but let's just you guys are all about just saying the thing so let's say the thing what would you what would actually be a good nurse's gift what what would show appreciation to nurses bto yes 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 yeah a hundred percent because it's it's funny that you said that it's like i heard nurses talking about like oh i i couldn't make my wedding date or i had to shift my wedding plans and it's like what are we doing and it's just there are nurses that are like i can't i can't take pto it's like what do you mean you can't? You're working so hard and we can't take a break. Yeah, that would be a lovely gift. Pizza is not on the list, though. <laughs> like, right. I know, Parties. yes, we love food, but pizza is not on the list. Right. We're I mean, beyond pizza at this point. <laughs> I, I think it's giving us some steak, right? Giving na- nurses some agency to make some decisions. I think that's probably what nurses would really want. And I think that, you know, when I think about, you know, what I would have wanted, I, I, I it's not about just being on a committee. It's just being able to have some form of agency in and how we go about doing our work so yeah i mean it's sad mm-hmm. to say that it would be nice to have a break nurse or someone like that where i can take a full break or even i'll be honest like worthy mental health resources because i think that's the other thing that we don't get oh, yeah. um there's something called presumptive care. So it's like a legislation which puts nurses with firefighters and EMS and police that if they were to experience, you know, violence or trauma on the job, that they can get, you know, PTSD and support and and resources. We don't have presumptive care here. It's crazy. We don't, although there's stats that show that we have the same levels or higher levels of trauma and mental health. We don't have access to those resources. We would have to pay out of pocket or we'd have like an EAP where you, you know, you tell your story to someone for three, t- three, three sessions and then it's over. So I think that, you know, if maybe we had some better resources that were actually, you know, organizations said, hey, we value you. We want you to be here and we're going to look after you from a mental health standpoint. I think that'd be really great. Yeah. And I yeah, think that, yeah. you know, I almost wish that there was um, a patient's like, code of conduct almost because I've heard so much about violence in healthcare and especially during the pandemic it's gotten a lot worse for nurses and we have very few of any resources if we're physically attacked or verbally abused by a patient or their families and it's always like well we need to provide care at all costs but I I do feel like there needs to be some onus or some um, accountability for people that abuse nurses just like if you were to hurt a police officer there are repercussions for that so I almost think 
something like that for nurses week would be nice. And just like, I guess, going from a political approach, I almost wish that in our neck of the woods, we could get an apology from some of the politicians that capped our wages and did other things that were really harmful to the nursing profession. Absolutely. Yeah. Give it. Give us a list later, and we'll try to get them on the podcast. <laughs> Track them down. Oh, oh, go, oh, go. I have. Okay. I've got the names, numbers, emails. I'll hook you up. Okay. We'll try to get some apologies out of these folks. Well, you said something, uh, Amy, earlier that um, you know kind of piqued my interest in the and in the fact that a lot of nurses felt, or maybe continue to feel, like they can't really speak out yes. um, uh, because of either just probably probably mostly like job repercussions right you don't want to get in trouble so so how did the two of you maybe we'll start with sarah like decide you wanted to have this bigger platform what what was the i guess the genesis of this doing the podcast the gritty nurse podcast and just you know being vocal speakers about about patient rights and and just help 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 us navigate your your path from uh you know practicing nurse uh, seeing patients to to doing more of a, this public mm -hmm. appearance. Well, I think it was similar to your journey. I don't know if Amy and I intended for everything to happen that happened. And we started right before the pandemic. So um, Amy and I mm. worked together in two different hospitals um, in, in similar roles. And there were a lot of instances where we felt bullied, we felt silenced, and we tried to take our concerns up to senior leadership. And they kept saying they were going to look into it. And we knew after a while, they weren't going to. So, a what was the role you were in? I'm just sorry oh, to no, interrupt. No. But so, um, we were we were in nursing leadership, Amy and I, and um, doing we were like educators basically. So, we were responsible for helping new nurses um, learn the job and also continuing education for nurses who had already been there, um, and and doing things like quality improvement. So, um, we actually experienced a lot of bullying in nursing leadership, which is surprising because. You would think that, I don't know what I thought. I didn't think that would be the case when I moved from bedside to nursing leadership, but it was almost worse. And I think, you know, Amy and I would drive home and we would have these phone calls as we were driving home just to kind of vent and debrief about everything. And now when I think about how we do the podcast, it's kind of similar. Like even the amount of time it took us to have these phone calls, that's kind of the length of the podcast that we have now. And it was just like feeling frustrated that we tried to bring our concerns up to leadership and they weren't doing anything. So we just said, you know what, why don't we create our own platform and share our stories? And, you know, we're sure that someone out there has experienced what we have and we don't want them to feel alone. So that was the beginning of how it started. And then the pandemic happened and then everything kind of snowballed from there. Yeah. yeah. How, how do you. How did you, so you saw the, the, this bullying, this type of mentality from nursing leadership, um, or is it from nursing or toward nursing leadership? I, is that? Or both. Or both. <laughs> it was it's, like, it's a little bit from A and B. Yeah, yeah. I would say. Okay. Yeah. But mainly it was from our colleagues and, and later on it was yeah. our manager. So what do you do when it's your manager? That's the bully, because that's right. usually the person you're supposed to go to for help. So, so what did you, I guess, how did you, how, were you successful in changing that culture at all? Like what were the steps that you took to, to set a new standard? Well, I mean, oh, I'll let Amy speak yeah, because she actually wrote a letter and tried to other, do other things to, you know, try and make the situation better. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was really wild because, you know, I think again, um, we have something called an internal reporting system and, you know, you could, you could put anything in there, anything from like patient care incidences up to like something personal. So again, what Sarah said, how can you put in, you know, that you're being harassed or bullied by your leadership when that IRS will go to your leadership team? So I remember mm -hmm. reaching out to leaders that were higher than this individual and they're like, Oh, we'll, we'll investigate. And I kind of, I don't know if you've heard of this, um, that happened recently is called a letter to my abuser. And I did something similar where I kind of wrote this letter about this, the healthcare system and particularly that, you know, systems continue to perpetuate people, lift people up who continue to do really poor work and not just poor work, but continue to bully those. Although this person might be producing results that the hospital wants, they're also doing it off of the backs of their, you know, their nursing staff. And they said to me, oh, you know, we're going to make changes. We're going to change the way that we look at mental health here. I have heard 
nothing. <laughs> okay. Not, <laughs> not a word. I, I think I left that place and I, I actually quit without having any prospects because I just knew that it was actually best for my mental health. I was actually really, really sick. And I was actually at the wow. point where I, I felt that I might've taken my own life. And I said, you know what? I had a lot of support. So I had people that were really standing around me and I just knew that I had to leave. So I left with no prospects and it kind of leads into what Sarah mentioned. I, I said to Sarah one day, I said, why don't we just start a podcast? And I remember her being like, what's podcast? And I was like, my cousin has one. <laughs> Let's listen. And I was just like, you know, who, who knows who's listening? And I'm like, but at least we can share our stories. So Cause I think storytelling yeah. is really powerful and it, it can't be just us. We're not the only people that are experiencing this. Other folks must experience this too. So we just started telling our stories and it kind of took off from there. And then again, like Sarah said, the pandemic hit and um, it was very interesting. Um, we actually, there are physicians that were kind of talking on behalf of nurses. I'm um, talking about, you know, things that were happening and what they saw in nursing. And I, I said to Sarah, I'm like, this is crazy. Why are physicians speaking for nurses? And yeah. I, I went into the Twitter verse before it turned into like, you know, a little bit of a mess. What it is now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, why is why are physicians talking for nurses? Talk to nurses. And we had our first national news hit. Re they reached out to us. It was the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation for a national news piece to talk about nursing and that we're here and we're ready to be a part of the call. And we had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> um, they're just like, put your camera on Zoom and you know, we'll ask you these questions. And it was terrifying it yeah, was so it was. scary and the thing is like you we can't see ourselves but you can see them on the other end and hear them uh -huh. and then there was like a little bit of a delay because then they pulled our our video up and I'm like oh my god there I am on tv I'm trying to answer this person's <laughs> question and I'm like oh my gosh but I think it started this whole movement for us to start talking about what we were seeing what we were hearing um our experiences and um it was definitely a process, yeah. but it, it was something well, well worthwhile because we need to be seen in those spaces as well. Oh, absolutely. It's so interesting to me. Like we have different healthcare systems, obviously the, the U S and Canada and, um, different issues in each system. But despite that, like it, what I'm hearing that's the same is that it's so easy for, for our healthcare systems and institutions to forget about the humanity of the people in the institutions, you know, whether that's patients or nurses or physicians. I mean, I'm seeing it at every single level, you know, that it's just something that is so overlooked. It's just like, how do we make sure that everyone in these walls has their basic human needs and dignity respected and taken care of? And, and it, it's, interesting and discouraging and frustrating, you know, to see that this seems to be an issue that, you know, crosses international lines even. And, and how do we, I mean, I don't know. I think it's a, it's a long-term fix. I don't know to, to fix that, but it just yeah. needs to be pointed out. Like that's our mission, right? As our company is just to, to bring, you know, humanity <laughs> back into healthcare in, in various ways. And I'm, I just, I don't know. It I'm strikes me. Yeah. And I'm I'm so glad you were able to to be there, like be that nursing voice. Yeah. Uh, I didn't I honestly didn't even think about that. I mean, there's there was um it's it's funny you say like you didn't know you had really didn't know what you were doing and it was scary. Like nobody knew what they were doing at that time, right? Right. Like, right. It That's was, true. Yeah. Like all like I who how many of us un, like knew what Zoom was like <laughs> before 2020? I don't think right. I had ever known. Well, I did. You probably did, I... but you were working remotely for <laughs> yeah. like several years. Right. But um uh it's just good on you for like recognizing that that uh that gap in that <laughs> They, there's no way the public should have only been hearing from physicians. Especially like about topics right. like the nursing shortage. I think that's what drove me right. over the edge. It's like, <laughs> why were you talking about the nursing shortage? You would never ask a nurse about the physician shortage, right? Right. right. Yeah. yeah, and they start or creating... like in our country, you know, men making decisions about women's health. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That is crazy. <laughs> 
yeah, it was so weird because they would create all these tables and forums. So they're like, oh, here's the COVID-19 task force. And there's like 15 doctors and like not a nurse. And so like, mm-hmm. really? Like we're the, like, there was actually a, a cute little saying that's like, you know, we give the shots. Why can't we call the shots? Right. Mm-hmm. And I think it was just, we were left off of so many agency making or decision making tables where it was just like, Sarah and I were just like, you know what? Fine. If you don't want to invite us to the table, we'll, cr- we'll kind of create our own. And that's yeah. kind of how the the podcast spring kind of it was like a springboard for us because the other piece that yeah. led us into a, a variety of different things like actually doing some work in politics you know working with political leaders across Canada and being able to have that say because I don't think that otherwise if if not even just myself and Sarah but if you know nurses didn't start speaking up that we would be left off and it's just kind of like we're seen and not heard we're like these angels and we do all this great work but we're not really heard from and we really want to change how that looks that always makes me mad because you see the same thing with like moms or let's be honest most female dominant professions teaching right where you praise them effusively and the this most important jobs in the world and all these things. And it's like, well, then pay us, you yeah. know, like, mm-hmm. or whatever the issue is, show you know, yeah. <laughs> show, show it in show your actions, respect, not your yeah. words. Yeah. What kind of things would you guys, per, you know, what kind of agency is missing? Like what types of issues would you like to have agency and decision-making power around? Yeah, I think we nurses need to be seen a little bit more in politics. I know you guys have some really great nurses out there. We always like shout out. We're like, hey, Corey Bush, uh, come on her podcast. But I think we just need to see more nurses in various different roles, right? And I think that, you know, when we have that ability to, you know, be in politics, be in communications, be in the media, that you'll see nursing in a very different light. And we're actually giving, you know, the public a little bit of a different insight into how nurses operate. Because I think that there's a little bit of a fallacy where nurses just work at the bedside. Side, but we can see be seen as so much more different areas. And I feel that when I think about, you know, patient outcomes or I think about policy, how can we not be a part of that? We deliver the care. We see the intricacies and the issues that happen right at the bedside or in or in public health. And how can we not be a part of how these policies or these these things are formed? So it's just that's what I mean by agency. But it's for for whatever reason, we're just not seen as, you know, leaders in these areas or we're not seen as experts in these areas. Where um we're starting to change that because we really are and we need that, that voice needs to be heard and we that perspective needs to be given as well. I would love to see more nurses in business. I think that's another area that's Mm -hmm. missing. Um, More nurses that are CEOs, especially of hospitals and other healthcare organizations. Um, One of the things that our journey led us to is also we have a book coming out. So um, that's coming out April 2nd. And one of the, the opening part of the book is like, can you name a famous nurse? But it can't be Florence Nightingale. And that's Mm -hmm. where people usually get stuck because we've had this one nurse that people have looked up to for over a hundred years. And why don't we have other nurses who are actually alive that people know about? And, you know, I think, I think that's definitely something we need to keep amplifying. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I want to get into your book here. Let's take a quick break and then we'll be right back. Talk some more. Hey, Kristen. Yeah. AI tools are everywhere now. That is true, and they're here to stay. That's right. Well, have you heard about Precision? What what is it? This is great. This is the first ever EHR-integrated infectious disease AI platform. That sounds useful. Infectious disease, it's a hard field. you got to figure out when to start antibiotics and and try to to decrease resistance and how long to keep the patient. It's it's really tough. Well, this is an AI tool that automatically highlights better antibiotic regimens. It empowers clinicians to save more lives while reducing their burnout. To see a demo, go to precision.com slash KKH. That's precision spelled with an X instead of an E. So P-R-X-C-I-S-I-O-N dot com slash KKH. All right, we are back with Sarah Fung and uh, Amy Archibald Varley. Uh, So uh, I have a quick question uh, coming from the perspective of a physician. Just what what is one thing that physicians should know about about their about the nurses that they work with uh besides like don't touch the iv poles like we all know that <laughs> obviously but like what what is what is a way that that we can help you in your and in, in whatever way you want to interpret that 
That's a good question. Um, I would say just help people understand that it's not a hierarchy because I think people still think like the doctor's up here and the nurse is here and we're just handmaidens that are supposed to take orders. So I think there's this general public perception that that's how nursing was a hundred plus years ago and that's how it still is. So just helping people understand that we are the eyes and ears and backbone of the profession and we are we're all on the same team. We just have different roles. That's what Mm -hmm. I would want some people to know. And I'd add to that as amplifier voices too, right? So, you know, for every, every doctor show or every, you know, podcast that there might be like, for example, what you're doing today, you're amplifying nursing voice. So if you have the opportunity, you have the platform, you have the wherewithal, please amplify what's happening in the in our nursing profession because there is agency and power in your voice. It's kind of the whole idea of, you know, power shifting, right? Um, if you have power, shift it, shift the narrative yeah. and share your voice and lend your voice to say, hey, you know what? Although I'm a physician, this is happening. And here's a really gr- excellent colleague that can talk to you about this or whatever the case may be, but amplify our issues, amplify us as a profession and, you know, um, bring us to the tables when you can. Uh, great suggestions. Yeah. Uh, so tell me about um, your book. So I've, I'm always impressed by anybody who has the, this is <laughs> has the just got it right there. there. Right there. If you're watching it on YouTube, you can see it's just holding I'm it up. Holding it's it the up. wisdom I, of nurses. I just want to show you guys. I'm super excited because Ah, sorry, but we're in the, you we're the inside excited. cover too. Like this is legit. This is legit. Hey. <laughs> nice picture there. That does. That looks. That's a nice cover. I like it. Yeah. Oh how, my goodness. How, how long you been working on this book? Oh, almost three over two years. years. Almost three yeah. years. Oh, yeah. Gosh. Yeah. What an undertaking. That's, yeah. Oh, man. It takes a long time. So just, that alone makes me think I'm never going to write a book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like I don't know how. It just seems really hard, but so uh, yeah, tell me, tell us a bit, a bit about it. What, what can people. Yeah. No one ever like teaches you how to sit down and write a book. No, no, you know? no it is a, definitely a process. Um, so like yeah. I mentioned, the book really starts out by saying, can you name a famous nurse? And most people can only name Florence Nightingale, if anybody. So like we just, we wanted this to be um, just opening the public's eyes as to what type of nursing like what do nurses actually do and what kinds of diversity exist in nursing so we have a number of stories from different nurses as well as amy and my own story about how we got into nursing and our journey to becoming who we are today yeah and i think i think what we wanted to do really is shift the perspective right i think again like we want people to see nursing in a different light so we're not just lamp bearers we are not just you know um we're not the ladies of the lamp anymore and these kind of various different tropes we're not sexy nurses like we kind of talk about the myths too right we kind of break right. them down mm-hmm. but we want we want um the it's not just a book for nurses it's actually a book for the general public because we want people to really understand where we're coming from and the aspect of the power of storytelling is kind of the narrative right through our, our our book we're really telling stories and sharing experiences so people can connect with you know the things that we've experienced the things that we've seen the things that you know sometimes we go a little bit on the you know funny side where we may talk about a horror story or something related to healthcare but i think we just want people to see that we're we're such an eclectic group we have such a, a variety of backgrounds and that we really want to change and shape the way that people view nurses because there is wisdom in our voices and we want people to really understand and acknowledge that and come on this journey with us. Yeah, I love that title because it just immediately, you know, points out kind of the crux of everything that you're saying today and, and, and through your podcast of you you have wisdom that you have things to to add and things to say and, and they're valuable things that are being ignored. So, you know, being able to give those things yeah a voice is very important. And who doesn't love good nursing stories? I mean, right. Yeah, yeah. really. <laughs> like, I mean, you guys see it all. <laughs> we, I, most of the, uh, I, I would say the majority of the stories that get sent to us, because we're always asking for stories, are these nurses, crazy, crazy yeah. nursing stories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have a few of those in there too, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Good. Definitely people should check it out. But I have a, um, a little activity for us to do uh, that... <laughs> Let's see. So, so this is called name that nurse. All oh, right. very appropriate that, for what. Ex- exactly. <laughs> oh no. Am I going to pass this oh, test? Oh no. <laughs> Am I so, allowed to So Google? we're going to. 
<laughs> I mean, you, we can't see what yeah. you're doing. So, you know what? You know? This, is, this, is, this isn't pro metric. We're not going to like, you know, <laughs> right. you know, you know, we don't have a lot of um, opportunities Check your to phones avoid in to the lockers. Exactly. Avoid cheating. But so what we're going to do is we're going to read descriptions of either famous real nurses or fictitious nurses. Mm. All right. All right. <laughs> OK. And you got to try to, you know. Guess who it is? Now some of these are kind of tough. Uh, so oh, don't. Oh, oh no! All right, now, here we go. Or I think they're tough, but you you Maybe probably you, have yeah. much more knowledge about <laughs> real and fake nurses out there. All right, here we go. Considered one of the most iconic movie villains. Oh. She doesn't yell at her patients in the mental mental institution where the film takes place, but she does manipul manipulate them in horrible ways, all for her own purposes. Is it Nurse Ratchet? It? Nurse Ratchet from Nurse One Ratchet. Flew of the Cuckoo's yes. Nest. Ooh, okay. From One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Nice <laughs> job. <laughs> Which I haven't seen that movie in a long time. Yeah. But that is like the classic yeah. evil nurse. <laughs> She's from, pretty bad. From... <laughs> there was that Netflix reboot recently. I watched that one. Oh, oh, was I didn't there? Even know. I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't aware about We're that. We're very out of touch. Oh no, I I did hear about people talking about that. Was it was it called Ratchet? Or yeah, it was called was, Ratchet. Yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah, that's right. What'd you think of it? Is it good? Oh, it was morbid. There's some. There's some really was, sick I it was things. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. All right, here we go. A nurse anesthetist, the co-founder of the School of Nurse Anesthesia at Harlem Hospital in 1951, and the first African American president of the American Association of Nurse Anesthetists. Oh, no, I saw she this name part, just recently. She was part of the surgical team that operated on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. after a 1958 assassination attempt, manually pumping his breathing bag. She also lived to be 103 years old. I just saw her name. Oh, like, I feel like we should oh get my a gosh, pass it's... because we're in Canada. <laughs> no, <laughs> it was literally true. a part that's of Black true, History true. Month. But no, it was a part of Black History Month. And I, okay. I, I saw Maybe it on LinkedIn like two days that. ago. Oh, it's, no. It's, 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 no, it's okay. It's okay. I, I, didn't, I, I didn't know this at all. I did, you know, this is research. And, and like you said, you do get a pass because this yeah. is very American-centric. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is Goldie D. Brangman. Yes. Yeah, there was a post about right. her on LinkedIn a couple of days ago. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, what an interesting life story. That I, right? Like. I'll look her that's up now. incredible. <laughs> yeah. Right, Goldie D. Brangman. Everybody check her out. Uh, she lived to be 103 yeah. years old. I Can you imagine living another like 70 years? I got to say, <laughs> I'm not sure that'd be all no, that's great. Not, not with the current state of affairs. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, please. Right. My body's already falling apart. Like 85, <laughs> like, I'm ready. Oh. Let's, let's wrap this up. Yeah. Um, okay, here we go. In a school where students contend with everything from werewolves to dragons to vomiting slugs, this nurse is a remarkable healer. It sounds like someone from Hogwarts. <laughs> Yeah, it is. You guys remember? I don't know if you're if you're Harry Potter oh. fans. If you remember the name of the nurse in Harry Potter, the nurse oh. in Harry Potter. Oh my goodness, uh, that's a hard one. It that is, is hard a hard one. one. She's like mentioned a few times, but she's not like a main character <laughs> by any means. It's Madame Pomfrey. Madame oh. Pomfrey from Harry Potter. Okay. <laughs> what, episode, what, what one of the seven was she in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. This is, um, I actually feel kind of embarrassed including this one uh, now, but let's go ahead <laughs> yeah. and do it. She's regarded as the founder of modern nursing. She became a champion for nursing as a profession in England and internationally. You probably already know who I'm talking about. Mr. Talking Scoot. about Little Flo. Flo. <laughs> yeah. Flo, Nurse Flo. Miss Flo. She founded the first professional school of nursing, and her book, Notes on Nursing, became a foundational text, a uh, pioneer in the use of statistics, histogram. Really a, a fantastic, you know, amazing I mean, there's individual. a reason that, that she became famous, <laughs> but there are more than just the one. That's right. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. That was an easy one. All right. Here we, here's, here's one that uh, I, this, this might be kind of tough because it's a little bit older. Working as the head nurse at the U.S. Mobile Army Surgical Hospital Unit during the Korean War. Mary's She's a no-nonsense, by-the-book authority figure, nicknamed for the temperature of her lips. I was going to say Mary Sequel, but maybe I'm wrong. This is from the show MASH. From the show oh, MASH. Nicknamed for the temperature <laughs> of her lips. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. I, 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 I was like maybe like seven when MASH was out. I know. I know. That that was, was, yeah. a hard one for oh, Margaret's no. group. <laughs> Margaret Hot Lips Houlihan. Oh, I can think of Hot Lips in my head too. <laughs> No, that was a long time ago. That, that would have been a, a question for my mom. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Last one I have here. She is a pioneer in establishing nurse midwifery and a system for providing care in rural eastern Kentucky. She founded the Frontier Nursing Service and later opened the Frontier School of Midwifery and Nursing Services. Well, this is again very American centric. So we are not true. doing yeah. well. I think two, I think we've gotten two right answers so far. No, no, no. This, this, this we're tough. Nurse midwifery. Are you Googling? Yeah, You're yeah. looking down. I no, I just <laughs> I'm looking down for inspir I should maybe I should be looking up for inspiration. I, I have no idea. Mary Breckenridge. Mary Breckenridge. Don't know her. I don't know. Don't know her. Don't worry. Yeah. Please work hard. Why don't you guys tell us before yeah. before we wrap up? Give tell us, us the, about, you know, one or two nurses that we should us, know about. Yeah, who should yeah. we know? Yeah. Who yeah. should we know about? Well, actually, you we know go who, through them in my in our book too. We go through about yeah. twelve. Can you give us uh one or two? Well, yeah, Amy and I are one or two. Amy and I are one or two. We decided but... that we should be on go. that list. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you're making the list, Absolutely. why not? It's your <laughs> list in there. You know who I found, who was who I didn't actually know about. I, I kind of we know her from a, a variety of other things like the Underground Railroad, but uh, Harriet Tubman. She was also a nurse, and it oh. kind of threw me oh, for wow. a whirl because she actually lived in St. Catharines, which is in Hamilton. And uh, yeah, she was also regarded as a nurse. And I was just like, why didn't we know that Harriet Tubman also was a nurse? Yeah. So um, she had many, many skills and nursing was one of them. Wow. Mm. And the, sure and the other one who too. we still hope to get on our podcast one day is Corey Bush. Would love to have Corey Bush sure. on the podcast. So, so Corey Bush, if you're listening. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Well, I, I think uh, I, I made that a little bit too hard. Yeah, for, that was pretty tough. Guests. So next time when you come on our show. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. For you can have revenge. Yeah. yeah. I probably would not, if we did the same thing, but for physicians, I, I would probably not do very well. Yeah. I don't know, it's like, so good. The history of medicine. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not like a history buff right. by any means. You knew that about me. Yeah, but I, I mean, the, to their point, I think there are physicians that just everybody knows about. If I you know? could go right. back and redo that, it would be like famous Canadian nurses. I think that maybe might have been a little be, bit easier. Be a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. <laughs> well, all right. So I want to make sure that everybody knows about all the things that that you guys are doing. So the wisdom of nurses, um, it comes out April second. Is that right? Yep. Yep. We didn't want to so make it April it Fool's, so it's April 2nd. <laughs> it's real. We're yes, not kidding. Not We're joke. really letting out a book. <laughs> right. Uh, you can uh, you can pre-order them, you know, uh, pre-order the book if you'd like. Um, yeah, there it is. The wisdom of <laughs> nurses. Were you guys, were you involved in the cover selection there? Um, They kind of showed us various yeah. different designs. There was like actually a surprising amount them, of yeah. conversation that went into the stethoscope, believe it or not. Because oh, yeah, really? because we were like, what's one image that could represent nursing? And then we're like, well, we can't do the lamp because that's too antiquated. Uh -huh. um, it can't yeah. be our faces because they said it shouldn't can't be, be a face. cap or a skirt. No, yeah, no, right. no. Right. And then we thought a syringe like maybe might be IV a little, pole could have been maybe a... <laughs> IV pole, but syringe might have been a little violent looking. So a lot of yeah, a lot of thought went into blood this. pressure cuff. I don't oh, know. That's a good I, idea. I like. But yeah, you know, but but you just stethoscope. You're doing manual blood pressures anyway. You're using that, so I think stethoscope's yeah. a good choice. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 you also got the the whole thing about you know doctors stealing nurses' stethoscopes. Mm. And oh, not and pens, them back. pens, and like, pens. I was going to say, yeah, Where did my pen go. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, Would you like pens for nurses? We good pens, <laughs> ones that roll, ones that pens. write yeah. smoothly and don't and don't oh, like no. explode all over your. <laughs> Exactly. We're gonna get yeah. ourselves in trouble. Splurge now. on the really good pens and, and put nurse on them all. <laughs> we also have to shout out your podcast, obviously, the Gritty yes. Nurse podcast. Uh, listen to a couple episodes; fantastic. It just you guys have a great chemistry together, and uh, what a, a awesome insight into nursing. Yeah, the, the your recent episode about the um, you had like the tr it's like a true car true crime oh, flavor. The Bruce Ackman. To the, yes. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. amazing. <laughs> fascinating stuff so yeah definitely check out uh, the gritty nurse podcast anything else 
Where can so, people find yeah, you? Yeah, where can people find uh, find all the information? Oh my goodness. We're, well, Sarah, I mean, you can go Sarah, to our, drop all the handles. All right. Well, <laughs> you can go to our website, which is grittynurse.com. We have a YouTube channel. We're on all the major podcast platforms. So Apple, Spotify, Google, iHeartRadio. Um, what else? We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're, we're everywhere except TikTok. So don't look for us on TikTok. Okay. There you go. Still, there's still time. There's still time to get into TikTok. There's still time. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It really was a pleasure talking with you. Thanks thank so you much, so much for having us. Hey, Kristen. Yeah. Notice anything different about me? You look the same as always. Uh, I'm covered in mites. Uh, well, you don't have to tell everyone that. <sighs> Maybe you need a mite too. Uh-huh. What do you think? I. I prefer to be mite free. You know what these things are? They're demodex. I know. They're ever, enormous. Have you ever had red, itchy, irritated eyelids? No, but that does sound very uncomfortable. It could be caused by one of these little guys. Mm. Now, they're a lot smaller in real life. Well, that's comforting at right? least. But it's, it's, they're called demodex. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, yeah, it can cause problems with the eyelids. They're the mites that live on your eyelashes. Mm, just chomping on all that goo. Now, it might seem gross, but you don't want to get yeah. grossed out by this. Okay. All right. You got to get checked out. That is very sensible. Go to your eye doctor. Ask about Demodex blepharitis. All right. That's really what you got to do. Or DB, Mm. if you want to be a little shorthand with it. Yeah. Make it sound like you know what you're talking about. Exactly. To find out more, you can go to eyelidcheck.com. Again, that's E-Y-E-L-I-D-Check.com to find out more information about these little guys. Tell them Dr. Glockenfleck and sent you. That's right. Demodex blepharitis. No, they were fun. They were fun. We, I, I get. We. Need, <laughs> they were good sports about got, that game. That was hard. I know. We got to have more nurses on the podcast. Yes. Like, if you have suggestions, nominations. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's um, yeah. I, it's, they, they're talking about like we got to like platform more, like more healthcare professionals, right? Get yeah. more healthcare uh, is a branch very out a little bit. It's not field. just physicians, yes. and right. I'm, I'm like just as bad as anybody of. Of just like focusing in on physicians. That's well, that's what, I what know. you are. So, I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing to talk about, you know, but your experience. Out. But yes, there are a lot of experiences within the healthcare <laughs> field. <laughs> there so. sure are. Um, all right. Should we get a fan story in? Yes. All right. Let's do it. So, this is uh, Melissa. Melissa says, Hi, I just found your podcast after listening, listening to the Sawbones episode you, oh, when you nice. visited. We were on Sawbones, yeah, and then they came on ours. That's right. We had a little crossover, a little home and home thing, mm-hmm. and uh, which was a lot of fun talking with them. Yeah, it was. It was like a, a Twilight Zone, you know, like version of ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wait, why? Just it was so bizarre to talk. Oh, because to, we had they were they're a couple, like, and we're a couple. Name and... other name another like medical comedy yeah, couple that's true. podcast. That's true. It's that one. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, and let's see. So she says, uh, saw the sawbones and was glad to find it because I've always enjoyed the Glock and Fleck and post on social media. I just noticed I was listening to the episode you all made on the podcast with Justin and Sydney that From will, sawbones. that, that will stated he has a tendency to just spout things off without fact checking mm. himself. I do have that problem from time yeah. to time. And I wanted to let you know that we have a word for that in our family that my oh, friend my. Nicole came up with. <laughs> Nicole and I noticed both uh, both noticed that our teenage sons tend to do this. And since my son teaches aerospace lessons in his civil air patrol squadron, uh-huh. I've heard him say a number of things that were amusingly made up during those lessons, but delivered with perfect <laughs> That's confidence. That's not an area that you want things being made up. <laughs> we, <laughs> we call this... Testifidence. Test Testifidence. 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 There you go. Testifidence because it's a tendency to testify with perfect confidence, something that you don't actually know all the details. I thought that was gonna go to like testosterone Uh, because men tend to do this. I thought testing I think there's like like a double entendre there with uh, testicles. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I like I love it. Testifidence. Testify with perfect confidence with your testicles. Mm-hmm. There you go. That Use is your, it. Your testicles to testify. Yep. Even when you it. don't have them, works apparently. Works on so many levels. It still works. So now we have yeah. a word for it. I'm going to use that. Testifidence. Mm-hmm. All right? Testifidence. Yeah. So call me out when I have too much. Your testifidence. Tes- That's going to be a keyword now in our house. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Melissa, and to your friend, Nicole, for coming up with that. 
Uh, send us your stories, knock, knock, hi at human content.com. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and it, what a wonderful episode. Um, let us know what you thought. We'd love to hear your, your, uh, your feedback. Uh, again, any, uh, any potential guests that we should uh, think about having on? We're always open to suggestions. Uh, you can reach out to us uh, several ways. You can email us, knock, knock, hi at human content.com. Um, also, game ideas. Yeah. That that was That's surprisingly I, hard to come up with game ideas well, after there was, how many there was, episodes. The idea was good, but to um, basically just that game with the, the, the nurse. Well, it just perfectly encapsulates what they were talking about, how yes. nobody knows anything about nurses. Like coming up with famous nurses, either in, in real life or in fictional, like there's not a lot out there. Right. I was I was disappointed to see that um, you did not mention the, this one? the Outlander nurse. Oh, that would have been an easy, <laughs> an easy yeah, uh, throw over yeah, to me. Was, um, Out- Claire Beecham, Claire. Randall Fraser. <laughs> you are so obsessed with that show. <laughs> all right, email us knock knock at human contentcom We're on all the social media platforms. Uh, also, you can hang out with our Human Content Podcast family on Instagram and TikTok. We're a very supportive family, very supportive. Human Content Pods on TikTok. Thanks to all the listeners leaving feedback and reviews. If you subscribe and comment, you can't you get you can't do one. You got to do both. Subscribe and comment. Don't comment without subscribing. No, we don't want that. Well, now no. you're just getting bossy. Okay, all right. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> I'm not the boss of you, people. Uh, but if you do both of those things on your favorite podcasting app or on YouTube, we can give you a shout out. Like Ashley eight eight three three on YouTube said, "We can't overlook the eyelid." I love how unintended that pun was. Oh, I bet you didn't even mean to do I that. I did not mean to do that. That's a good Can't one. Can't overlook the eyelid. That's good. Mm-hmm. It's good. in reference to a, a knock knock eye. Oh yes, yes. I did a, about eyelids. I did a show. I did a podcast episode on uh, eyelid twitching. Mm. Yeah, lots I of questions hate about eyelid twitching. twitching. Mm-hmm. So if you oh, want to hear, really annoying. If you want to hear all of it in excruciating detail, <laughs> go over to that knock knock. Okay, eye I gotta admit, episode. I did not listen. <laughs> <laughs> your episode. You never listen to my knock I knock eye episodes. I know, but you know, I hear it on your phone calls. But I haven't mm-hmm. ever heard a call about eyelids. Mm-hmm. I don't think. Is but here, listen. Here's all I want to know. Because that's an immediate like next available appointment. Eyelid twitching. Yeah, that's not. It's not like you mean on call. Like, yeah. No one calls about eyelid twitching. Right. Yeah. I that's, see what you're saying. Like that's a thing that that's can like wait. A, that's like that's a, not a pants patient. It's a thing month. that can wait. <laughs> right. But month. here's what I want to know. It goes away. Here's what I want to know. What makes it go away? Um, How do I make it go away faster? Because I hate it. You can't. I mean, you need to get better, more sleep. You need to get uh, less caffeine. Maybe if you listen to the episode, <laughs> you would know the answer to these questions, Kristen. God. Like what am I? What am I? Cliff notes Listen, over here. Listen, how much time do you want me to devote to the words you say? It's a thirty-minute episode. Brief. Every you listen, week. Okay, every morning you listen to Armchair Expert for like four hours. Yeah, I'm not married to them. <laughs> you can't give me thirty minutes of eyeball knowledge. <laughs> Come on now, that's all right. All right, full video episodes are up every week on my YouTube channel. Add Deagle Lock and Fleckin. We also have a Patreon. Lots of cool perks, bonus episodes where we react to medical shows and movies. Hang out with other members of the Knock Knock High community. Like us. We're there. We like being there. It's fun. Early ad-free episode access, interactive Q&A, live stream events, much more. Patreon.com slash Glockenflecken or go to Glockenflecken.com. Speaking of Patreon community perks. I don't know why you have to say it like you're choking uh, on it. Well, that's, that's, that's what it sounds like in the native German. Glockenflecken. <laughs> New member shout out to Valerie A, Caitlin Hi, S, Valerie S, A. Kelly G, Angus C, Kaylee A. Oh, welcome everyone. Yeah, hello. We, we're so happy to have you. Shout out to all the Jonathans as always. A virtual head nod to you all. Patrick Lucia C, Sharon S, Omar, Edward K, Stephen G, Jonathan F, Marion W, Mr. Granddaddy, Caitlin C, Brianna L, KL, Keith G, JJ H, Derek, and Mary H, Zana F, Jenny G, Jenny J. I always say that. That Jenny, one's always hard for you. Jenny J. What's hard? Jenny J. Uh, Mohammed K, Aviga Parker, Ryan, Mohammed L, David H, Jack K, Kaylee A, Medical Meg, Bubbly Salt, and Pink, Pink Macho. Macho. 
I appreciate that our producers uh, kept pink macho at the very Last. end. Yeah. Yes, it's a good one to end on. I hope that pink macho never unsubscribes because <laughs> I feel like it'd be very obvious can. at this point. I, 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 it's impossible. <laughs> You're not allowed to. You're locked into a lifetime contract with us, pink macho. Uh, Patreon roulette. Random shout out to someone on the emergency medicine tier. Martha S., thank you for being a patron. Thank you. That was the, the, I left the gap in there for you to do a drum roll, but you didn't. Oh, you didn't. I didn't get that memo. You nice. usually do the drum roll. Thank you all for listening. We're your hosts, Will and Kristen Plain. We're also known as the Glock and Fleck. And special thanks to our guests, Amy Archibald Varley and Sarah Fung. Our executive producers are Will Flannery, Kristen Flannery, Aaron Corney, Rob Goldman, and Shanti Brook. Editor and engineers Jason Portizo. Our music is by Omer Ben Speed. To learn about our, I love saying his name, Omer Ben Speed. That was a new take. Ben Speed. Yeah. To learn about our Night Night Highs program, disclaimer, ethics, policy, mysteries, fair case, you can go to <laughs> gawkandplugin.com or reach out to us at Night Night High at human dash kind of, it's a, nothing. It I'm not sure matter. it's legal to do that. Whatever. It's <laughs> a, a weird. It's just like our podcast. Uh, with any questions, just, you can, whatever. Just read that. The website. Just reach us. Go to the Twitter. Night Night High at, is a human content production. Goodbye. Hey, Kristen. Yeah. What do you think about my Dax co-pilot? He's here? very cute. Isn't Almost he? as cute as mine. Oh, he's great. He just sits right there. He's... Oh, I know. Can I tell you about Dax? Yeah, tell me. Oh, man. It's fantastic. The Dragon Ambient Experience from Nuance. Mm. They call it Dax Copilot. That's cute. Yeah. He helps with documentation burden, uh -huh. reducing burnout. In fact, 80% of patients... Say their physician is more focused using the DAX Copilot. Mm. That's that's huge. That's pretty we good. We all want to be able to connect more with our patients. Right. And all the documentation we have to do now, it makes it almost impossible. Yeah. Easy to burn out. Absolutely. your job. And 85% of patients say their physician is more personable and conversational. I like that. I want to, I, I, I need help being conversational you sometimes. You do. <laughs> and DAX is one of those things that can help you get there. So uh, to learn more about the Nuance Dragon Ambient Experience or DAX Copilot, visit nuance.com slash discover DAX. That's N-U-A-N-C-E dot com slash discover D-A-X. Thanks for watching the episode. You can find more on that playlist over there. If you prefer to listen or you just had your eyes dilated, you can binge full episodes wherever you get your podcasts or join the party over on Patreon where you get early access episodes, hang out with us, get lots of exclusive bonus content. Hope you subscribe, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think.